Hello, this is Vlad Romanov with SolusPLC.com and welcome back to yet another tutorial. So today we're going to be building a PLC programming project and essentially the goal of which is to create a batching system, a concept that is extremely important in many manufacturing plants. Now, what is batching exactly? Batching is a process through which you can create a certain volume of product that is going to be on the analog side. So essentially, it's working with liquids, it's working with flows, it's working with different valves, and it is a process that addresses two very, very major points. The first of, the first of all, you get the quality control. So you're creating a batch of a fixed size. That way you can do your quality checks on that specific batch. And for whatever reason, if you have any defects or any deviations for, from what you were trying to create, you can move on to the next batch. You essentially reject that batch and you start anew after fixing your problems. The second important concept is that it allows you to control production runs based on demand. So typically in a production environment, you would have customers or essentially orders that would be created in a specific volume. So you want, for example, 10,000 pounds of a, of a sauce or you want 10,000 pounds of a specific product and then you want to change the recipe or do something different for a different order. So you would essentially clean the tank, clean the pipes, and make sure that you can run the next batch for that specific order. Now, let's look at the demo of this. And the goal for you, as someone who is learning PLC programming and HMI development, is to try and replicate the system. Now, like I've mentioned, this is a an easy-to-build system for the functionality, functionalities it has, but you can certainly enhance both the HMI programs as well as the PLC programs in order to give it even more features. So here we have our main screen that displays the tank, three different ingredient lines. We also have flow meters that are going to indicate how much, how many pounds of product we have received. We're going to have a scale on the tank. We're also going to have a discharge, uh, discharge pipe. And last but not least, we're going to have an indicator of what's going on with the system and you'll see it change in just a moment from that main screen we have a button that allows us to navigate to the control screen so essentially the main screen is just for display purposes just like it would be done in a real application and then we have a control screen that allows us to start a new batch so as we had uh, mentioned we have three different ingredients one two and three from this menu you can select the target so here we currently have 145 we can set it to let's say 320, press enter. And once the PLC actually takes the value, you'll see it updated here. We also have the current values for every batch. And as we start filling, you'll notice this value is going to change. Next, we have three push buttons. So batch start, batch stop, and batch discharge. You'll notice um, very quickly that the batch stop button is grayed out. And that's done on purpose as it should be in any real production system so that the operator knows what they can do with the current state of the batch. So they can technically discharge. And the reason for that is that we don't have a flow meter provision for the discharge because ultimately there is no level sensor, which we can, of course, implement in a real system, but they can discharge at will and it shouldn't stop them from any other operations because once the liquids are in the tank, anything could technically happen and you could be washing down the tank. So you want to give them that functionality. Now let's start the batch and observe what happens. You'll see that the valves have opened. And of course you can use a different graphic or representation if you want them to look green altogether. I've chosen to highlight just the portions of the valves. But like I said, it's up to your imagination of what you can possibly do with these systems. So you'll see that the target is 320 out of uh, out of a potential current value. And once it reaches 320, you'll notice that the valve is going to close. And of course, like I said, we can add more indicators. You should also notice that the tank is currently filling. And the two options that we, we had before, batch start and batch discharge, are no longer available. So you cannot discharge your batch once you're currently running a product in. You can stop and then you can potentially discharge, but that would require someone to make that call. And that's to prevent the operators from accidentally discharging the batch while it's being ran into the tank. Once the batch is complete, you'll notice there's going to be a highlight at the top of the tank. You'll notice that the values are the same. And of course, I don't have any actual liquids running into the tank. 
This is just a simulation at which we're going to look on the PLC side. In this step, so the batch has been complete, you only allow the operator to run out this batch. And of course, if you start changing the targets, it will allow you to refill to that specific level, but that's not going to be a normal functionality. That's why you want it to be locked out. So you cannot start another batch while you still have product in place. The other thing that I do want to point out is this level meter. So the level meter is indicative of the tank fill level, not indicative of the batch. What that means is, is that this tank has been designed, and I'll show you where in PLC code, to hold up to 10,000 pounds. So in theory, you could set targets that are way different and that add up to 10,000 pounds. Therefore, this level might go all the way up if you were to add three ingredients that total to 10,000. Now, let's discharge the batch and see what happens. Of course, the discharge valve has been opened. The level is going to go down to zero. And you'll notice that the current values that are still at that level will only change to zero once the tank is completely empty. And the reason for that is, as I had mentioned before, we've specifically designed the system without a flow meter at the discharge. The reason for that is that flow meters are not 100% accurate. And you've also mix the system together. So you have three different ingredients that have been mixed inside of this tank. So it's really difficult to say what exactly is inside of this mix as you open the discharge. Therefore, you kind of assume that the previous targets have been hit until the tank has been completely emptied out. And now the process can begin anew. As you can see, the tank is ready for a new batch. We can start the batch by pressing the start button. We can stop it at any time. For example, if we're in mid production, you'll notice that there's going to be a batch paused display and we haven't filled anything. So it's not showing the level, but we can certainly discharge to go all the way down to zero in order to start a new batch. Then we can start the batch again. And you'll notice that the process repeats as would expected. We can stop the batch and we can restart the batch. And that shouldn't give us any problem since we are going to those targets. So as I've mentioned, this is a not an extremely complicated project. You can certainly enhance it with different features. One item that I was thinking already is a recipe system. So instead of sending these targets to specific values, which can actually re uh, lead to operator error. So for example, if you ask somebody to enter this 320, they might enter 325, they might enter 3200 by mistyping an extra zero and inadvertently make a bad batch. You could set different batch, essentially recipes that would be preloaded for a specific product. But anyways, that's outside of the scope of this specific example. So we have a batch that is complete. Let's just discharge the batch one more time before we look at the code on the PLC side. Okay, the tank is ready for a new batch. Let's switch over to RS Logics 5000 or Studio 5000. The first thing that I do want to point out is that you can download this code and go through it through. Uh, a link that we're going to post on solusplc.com. So if you want the solution to this current problem or implementation that you want to look through, including some of the other examples that we've programmed on this channel, as well as in the PLC and HMI programming classes, you can do so on the GitHub page. So in the main, in our routine, you'll notice that we have this batch control program. If we open this up, we've got the main routine. So inside of this main, we have three jump to subroutines or JSR instructions that control the control HMI interface and the simulation logic. So most of the work is going to happen on the control side. Everything that has to do with the HMI, the push buttons, the levels is going to be inside of the HMI interface and the logic that allows us to simulate essentially the flow meters and the discharge is going to be in simulation logic. Let's go into control and see if we can make some sense out of this. So starting with a rung zero, we have a very familiar structure that we use for latching in motor drives. So we have a batch start, not batch stopped and a batch running booleans. So if you remember, this is the exact same structure that you would use for a motor. So you can start the motor, 
the motor starts running and then the latch used through an XIC instruction would keep the motor running until a stop button is pressed. So this is exactly the same concept. Now we do have a HMI start push button that comes in on HMI Boolean 0 which energizes the Boolean right here and allows the batch to start. As I've mentioned, we do want to create these separate tags because different things could potentially start the batch in the real world. So for example, if you wanted to have a physical push button, you could add another XIC in parallel with this HMI Boolean. Next, we have a structure that allows us to stop. So there's going to be two different conditions and we could have actually put the tank full condition in series here. But what stops the batch is essentially a batch stop push button as well as a tank full condition. So either one of these, that's why they are in parallel of two XIC instructions. Next, we have the computation that allows us to create essentially the value of our tank and verify that the tank has been filled. So while the batch is running, what we're going to do is we're going to take the three flow meters, which we're going to compute in the simulation logic, and we're going to add them to a common value. And of course, as I had mentioned, if the total volume currently in the tank exceeds the 10,000 pounds, which if you remember was the full capacity, then the tank is considered to be full. And the reason why this is only latched in while the batch is running is because essentially the tank full condition unlatches the batch from running. So essentially you could never start it if you really wanted to. It's going to unlatch itself, so to speak. Next, we have the batch running. So while the batch is running, we have three different conditions, as you remember. So we have the target, which is going to be stored in this batch dent five, six, and seven. And then we have the actual flows. So while the actual flows are less than the targets, as you can imagine, the system needs to continue to fill the tank. So for example, for this ingredient one, the target is 320 pounds and the current is set at zero. So it's going to app open the valve ingredient one, so on and so forth. So we have three ingredient valves. And if the if all the values, meaning that each one of them has reached the target, then we say that the batch is complete and we need to stop the batch from continuing to run. Next, we have the tank current weight. So if the tank current weight is less than less than zero, so remember that we wanted to continue to run the batch until the tank has been emptied out. So we are computing the total, but then we're only allowing the batch to have been completed when the tank has been emptied out. And the reason for that, once again, is you want to really be certain that there's nothing present in the tank until, uh, until you are allowing the operator to start the next batch. Uh, we have another Boolean for the discharge push button. So the discharge push button comes in and triggers this batch discharge and the similar latch in logic. So if we want to discharge, we allow the stop button to stop the sequence and the batch is going to be discharging. And here we've put in the sequence that is essentially checking for the tank is not empty. So the tank will continue to discharge until it is empty or the stop button has been pressed. At which point, as we saw in the demonstration, you could resume discharging the batch and finalize that process. If the batch is discharging, we're going to open the discharge valve, which we saw on the bottom of the tank. And last but not least, we've got a couple of moves. So if the total uh, volume of the tank is less than or equal to zero, we're going to reset the three flow meters, as I had explained, uh, because we want to make sure that we've completely emptied out the tank since we have no way of really telling which ingredient has which metric. We want to reset them at the very end once the tank is empty. And of course, we do have this uh, OTE instruction that latches in the tank empty bit. On the interface side for the HMI, so very simple conditions that are still, um, that still requires some consideration. So when can you start a batch? So of course, it's when the batch is not complete and the batch is not running. So these are the important 
things that you should really understand when you're developing some of these not extremely complex but still um, little details in these applications and how they're going to be presented to the end user so you really want to hide some of the buttons that they should not be pressing so for example if you're discharging a batch you really shouldn't make the start button available which i see on many applications that are, it really confuses the end users and makes it very prone to errors when the batch is running or the batch is discharging that's when the stop button is is present on the hmi so once again you have to think about it logically so when are you able to push a stop button so it's only when the process is doing something and the two conditions in this case is whether it's running or it's discharging we have a few dents so this is going to be the computation for the height of the of the fill of the tank so essentially we're taking the 10,000 pounds dividing it by 100 to get a fill rate of 0 to 100 percent next we have the three valves so whether any of these tags is currently energized we're going to display the animation on the hmi which indicate that the valves have been open and notice that i don't I don't just read the tag directly what i do is i really break it off to the hmi side because that way it makes it easier if i use this in many places i might then decide to change how it operates and so in this condition i don't have to change my hmi tags and i don't need to readdress some of the tag values on the hmi side now once the batch is not running that's when the discharge button is available and of course it's running whether it's not running when it's either paused or it has been completed all the way to the full tank level when the discharge valve is open we have an indicator just like we have with the other ones and last but not least so we have a run which takes care of the different states for our tank so we'll go back to the hmi side but you can see that once the batch is running it's going to move a one into this double integer when the batch is not running it's going to move a two so on and so forth so there's going to be different conditions so when the batch is complete and it's not discharging it's waiting to be discharged when it's discharging then it's it's going to indicate that it's discharging and whether none of these is true then the tank is essentially paused so let's go back to the hmi view and i'll show you where that's located so if I unpause or essentially I stop the running of this application, I can double click on this indicator. Stop this, double click on the indicator. We can go into the five different states. So of course in zero, it's unknown. Then we have tank is filling, ready for new batch, batch complete, batch discharging and batch paused. So something that you should practice implementing. So this is a multi-state indicator. I do recommend that you understand how to tie this back to your PLC tags. Once again, if you need a reminder, go into your connections tab. Here from the tag menu, you can select the PLC tags that are currently in your program. And if you have any questions, you can definitely post them on the forum if you're struggling with implementing this this is something that i would consider fairly straightforward it shouldn't take you more than maybe a couple of hours if you want to get just the base right and if you want to implement additional features that might take you longer but something like a simple layout like this uh, shouldn't be too much of a challenge if you uh, do understand basic PLC and HMI programming. And like I said, if you have any questions, make sure to post them on the Solus PLC forums and any comments or different projects that you would like us to go over, make sure to post them in the comments as well. See you guys next time. Take care. Bye.